the next video is the next installment for Chips and the Crossword Gang and we're up to chapter 6. Chip set off for his round that evening, more than once stopping and nearly going home again. He had a nasty feeling that however things turned out, he, Chips, wasn't about to be nominated as Newspaper Boy of the Year. The shop was always a hurly-burly at this hour with customers purchasing things on their way home from work. Mr Nugget gave Chips his bundle without comment, only Smirker lounged behind the counter, arms akimbo, grinned so wide it was almost gummed to the back of his mouth, and his eyes, Chips thought, as unpleasant as those of a toad sitting on a rock waiting for its supper to fly by. Chips delivered his papers, taking longer than usual, feeling as if somebody had emptied a tin of creepy crawlies down his shirt. Back at the newsagents, the rush hour was over. Other kids not back. Shop emptying. Smirker still lurked behind the counter. Mr. Nugget retrieved the empty satchel, then crossed to the till and carefully laid some money on the counter. We'll make it two pounds seventy-five pence for the week. If you don't mind, Sonny, I'd like a receipt for that. Don't want you writing to your MP claiming you were robbed. I don't get it. You've got it. End of the road for you, Sonny. Just not cut out for this job, are you? Had people in here all afternoon moaning about the muddle you you got into with those magazines. And another thing, your crafty method of speeding up the deliveries had an old lady on the blower who said she saw you buzz by her front room window trampling down her flowers. Chris picked up, Chips picked up his money. There was no point in arguing. He Then he jutted out his jaw and turned for the door. Meanwhile, Maggie and Jeremy had set off together on their evening rounds. They usually did, mostly because Maggie had never quite shaken off the thrill of having a baby brother. Not much of a thrill for Jeremy, but he did have a winsome, fragile air, which encouraged people to feel they ought to be kept away from hard objects. Jeremy pedalled on ahead, occasionally turning his head as if hoping Maggie had fallen off or had a puncture, but the swish of pursuing tyres was always there. Look, you don't have to keep following me. I'm not, said Maggie. Did you know that... Did you know you had a greasy patch on the back of your shirt? And you need a haircut. If you let it grow much longer, it'll get tangled in the spokes. Jeremy sniffed off around a corner and Maggie kept straight on. At this time of day, she had a pleasant avenue to cover. There were trees in it and the gardens had double garages and herbaceous borders and bright terracotta gnomes dotted around artificial pools with water lilies. The gates were neatly painted and some had plaques which said things like, No hawkers. No circulars or beware of the dog. So far Maggie had never got bitten, but this time she nearly was. But not by a dog. She was at the end of the avenue, stroking a cat on the sunlit wall, when a man's voice bellowed at her across several rows of well cut hedges. Maggie opened the gate and walked back. There was an elderly gentleman with silver hair, a button cardigan, leather carpet slippers and a red face. It was you who just delivered this paper. Yes? Something wrong? Certainly there's something wrong, young lady. He snuffled like an angry polar bear, opening the pages of his evening news. He found the place he wanted and thrust it under Maggie's nose. Look, somebody's been trying to do the crossword puzzle and made a complete hash of it. One thing I look forward to of an evening is, evening is my crossword puzzle. Sorry, smiled Maggie. Don't know how it happened. I'll fetch you another. Maggie had run out of papers and would have to go all the way back to the newsagents. She was already late but noticed the bikes against the timber yard fence and squeezed through the gap. Jeremy, Jeremy Charlie the Chopper and Chips were up there solemnly, solemnly gorging. Charlie threw a king-sized packet of peanuts he'd thoughtfully bought for her and said, What do you think? Old Nuggets is giving Chips a sack. Delivering magazines to wrong addresses, he says. Chips grinned bleakly and trampling down somebody's flowers. To be honest, I might have. Anyway, it's curtains for my high fire. You'll soon get another job, said Charlie. Yes, yeah, sweeping the streets, except they'll sound too small to hold the broom. He told them in more detail about the list. The fantastic muddling wheelers crescent. Thing is, I reckon it was all fixed. But why? Smirker, said Maggie. I haven't done anything to Smirker, except when my dog Mitzi got loose and chased us. All the same, he must have it in for you, and to go to all that complicated trouble offending customers too, said Charlie. 
Maggie said all this couldn't have something to do with the hunt for the bicycle thief. Coincidence, said Charlie. Anyway, Smirker wasn't about when Chip said his dad was a detective. I mentioned it, said Jeremy. Maggie spat bits of peanuts. You what? You would? Maggie went on. Suppose the Nuggets are scared of the police. They'd be very careful about you, Chips. First of all, Miss Nugget offers you overtime. He's never done it with anybody else, and when they want to give you the sack, they make it quite so it looks as though you deserve it. They know it would look suspicious if they just booted you out for nothing. And Smirker and his roving commission. We've all seen him snooping about town looking into alleys and places. Hunting for fossils, asked Charlie. We're rushing to conclusions a bit. Hold on, said Maggie. She vanished down the ladder, through the hole in the gate. She came back with a newspaper, back up the ladders panting. You can call me daft if you like. What do you make of this? A gent in Gresham Gardens bawled me out for delivering a copy of the evening news with a crossword messed up. I didn't bother to look much, but now the ideas are spreading over all, all over thick and fast. Take a look. And that ends that installment for Chips and the Crossword Gang.